What up, what up, Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to this channel where I love to demystify the world and help you reach your full potential as a creator, as a business owner, as someone who's trying to ethically impact the world for the positive. I really wanna talk about it in this video and really assess, is Kickstarter something that you should be doing this year? This year, should you actually be launching a Kickstarter campaign? Should you be using this platform to get funding? Is this something that's gonna be right for you? I really think about this logically, but also understand where you are in your life. And if this is a good time to take action. So let's kind of get into that. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And also, if this is a video that you're watching and you're gearing up to your goals this year, first of all, congratulations, because most people are not willing to do that and actually push through and do things in the real world. But also, I hope at the end of this video, you then have the information needed to make that decision. All right, man, my name is Salvador Brigman again, and I've been in this industry when it comes to crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo since 2012. I also have the podcast, Crowdfunding Demystified, where I interview people every single week with different elements of crowdfunding, not just Kickstarter, also equity crowdfunding, also other platforms, charities, nonprofits, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I also talk about other things as well, building an online business, reaching your goals and your dreams as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, achieving more financial freedom and wealth and abundance in your life. I talk about a lot of different stuff on this channel, but specifically when it comes to Kickstarter, I think that this year is a really fundamental and a pivotal year. There have been a lot of new developments, and I think this is actually something you should really consider when it comes to is this a good fit or is this not a good fit? Is this something you should be taking action on or not when it comes to this year with Kickstarter? As you might know from my content and also the way just my brain works, uh, I really like to bring the mystery out of things and really kind of make it more cut and dry, more scientific, so we can actually understand it pulled apart and that way you can make a clear decision. So you just use a specific type of analysis when it comes to actually deciding this fact. So let's use a SWOT analysis. So let's look at the strengths, weaknesses, threats, and opportunities when it comes to launching a campaign and how this fits into your life. So let's start off the list with the strengths, right? So when it comes to doing a campaign, first of all, the great thing about Kickstarter is that you are going to get funding for your project. The next great thing is that you don't have to give away any equity, right? You can actually raise funding from the crowd, go directly to the crowd. You don't have to go through any kind of middleman, right? All you got to do is launch a new project, put it up there, and people can actually fund this sucker and give you the funding that you need to move to the next stage with that specific project. So the great thing about this, again, is that you don't have to give away any equity. I would say another huge benefit is that you can use the power of the internet, right? You can actually share this worldwide with a global audience of people that are backing you, even if you're not located, for example, in the United States, but you wanna get people from the United States to buy or to back your project or to participate in it in some way, you can use Kickstarter to use the power of the internet to get random strangers to back your campaign. So you can have a global audience of people. Another big thing I would say when it comes to that is that you can get feedback on your specific project or your product idea or the things that you're working on, be that a film or a theater project or a card game or a tabletop or a physical project, a gadget or a gizmo. You can get people to give you real feedback on that when you ship out your perks and your rewards to people and they've actually get this on their doorstep, they open this up, right? They take out the packaging, they can try it out, they can post it on social media, they can post it on Instagram, on TikTok, they can have what's called UGC in digital marketing terms, which is user-generated content and they can give you real-world feedback, which you can then use to actually improve the project. Great, you know, amazing idea, right, when it comes to that. I'd say another big benefit when it comes to the strengths of launching a campaign this year is that you can assemble a crowd. And I'm gonna be honest with you, dude, I think that the biggest opportunity when it comes to online marketing, when it comes to business, digital marketing, is the fact that you can have a crowd nowadays. You can be like a micro celebrity online, whether that's you specifically or your brand. You can have a whole crowd of people your customers, your evangelists, that are actually different than just an ordinary customer. They're actually singing your praises, they're sharing your brand messages, they're talking about your product with your friends, and they really feel like a part of your community. So I would say that's another massive strength when it comes to Kickstarter, is that you can actually build a community around your projects and around your brand. The final one I'm gonna mention in terms of strengths, and there are so many that I could list out and go through. We could spend an entire lecture, entire video on that, but I'm gonna end with this one when it comes to strengths, which is that you can and fail. 
I know that sounds kind of strange. I mean, in the United States, we actually have a culture, I would say, of failure, of being willing to actually fail multiple times to get to that success because no one remembers the failures. Like, no one remembers the books that I've written that failed, right? You guys remember the successes. I've written like over 10 books and people only remember the successes when it comes to that. And same thing goes with you. When it comes to your projects, you can fail at a business as many times as you want. As long as you don't, you know, break the bank, right? As long as you fail smartly and intelligently, you can continue to launch, Kickstarter campaigns. I've had guests on my podcast that fail with two or three Kickstarter campaigns before they hit it big and they do a six-figure Kickstarter launch. So I would say a massive strength behind Kickstarter is that it doesn't matter how many times you fail. You can keep going back to the honeypot, you can keep going back to that chest, and you can keep launching campaigns until you are successful. On another note, you can also launch multiple successful campaigns. Doesn't matter how many times you fail, it's not gonna damage your brand as long as you're doing it ethically, transparently, and you're also making sure to talk with your backers. All right, enough on strengths. Let's get into the weaknesses category when it comes to doing a campaign this year. I would say the biggest weakness, and this is honestly, I'm gonna just be like really clear with you, really honest, really transparent, is that you gotta put in some work, man. You gotta put in some work. You know, I got started in the industry again in 2012, and those were the days where you could literally just put up a campaign and people would just like give you money. It was insane. They would just give you magic money. And that still is actually true for some categories on Kickstarter. I would argue actually the card game, tabletop game category is like incredible when it comes to that. We have people launching like tarot card campaigns. They just get fun. They're like, it's insane, right? But I would say for the vast majority of campaigns when it comes to physical products, new inventions, gadgets, gizmos, that kind of stuff, film projects, etc. you do have to put in work in order to get funding on Kickstarter. So that's a massive weakness because you gotta devote a couple months of your life to learning about this, to getting together a great video campaign page, doing a pre-launch, which I talk about in some of the other videos, getting people excited, hyping them up, maybe working with a coach like myself or someone who can help you execute this specific campaign. You gotta be willing to put in some work in order to actually launch a great project. Now, I'm not talking about the campaigns that only raise like 10K or 15K, which is incredible, which is great. I'm talking about if you're trying to do like a six-figure campaign, a seven-figure campaign, you have to put in work in order to actually get that kind of result when it comes to crowdfunding. The next biggest downside, I would say, when it comes to doing a Kickstarter campaign is that the amount of results which you have in some way can also depend on your budget. So a lot of the times uh, people come to me and be like, Sal, I want to launch a campaign and I don't wanna spend any money on marketing. I don't wanna spend any money on my video. I don't wanna spend any money on the marketing materials. I literally have no budget. I have zero dollars in my bank account and I wanna get funding for my business or for my project. Now, you can do it, it's just very challenging. And the reason why is you have to rely more on what's called earned media and organic marketing. And that usually takes a lot longer than just kind of launching a campaign within a month or two months or three months, right? Because if you want to do it in a short span of time when it comes to one month, two months, three months, you got to have a certain budget. That doesn't have to be, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in order to launch a campaign, but you do have to have at least a little bit of a budget to get some nice looking photos, maybe a nice video together, maybe some help when it comes to advertising, promotion, and marketing. You got to have a little bit of a budget in order to get this sucker off the ground to actually add some kindling to the fire so then you can actually have other people check out this massive fire which you're building and start to have a roaring bonfire, right? You gotta start off with a little bit of your own kindling before you really pour some gasoline on that sucker and you get that bonfire going. The next weakness is there's a lot of other competition and this really depends on the category as well, but there are other people that have seen my videos, that have seen podcasts that I've done, that have seen the success of other people on Kickstarter. Brandon Sanderson raising millions of dollars with a book on Kickstarter and therefore other people have recognized the opportunity and they're going after this, right? So you got some competition and whenever there's competition, that means that you gotta do more to stand out. So you gotta have a unique idea, a unique angle, a unique project, something in some way that captures the imagination of the public. And if you can't think about that, you need to work with someone who can come up with that idea of how this is magical, unique, interesting, and add those kinds of elements, right, to your pitch so that it does stand out to the crowd. So that would say that's another massive weakness is 
you got some competition now when it comes to launching a project. The final weakness I would say when it comes to launching a campaign this year is the fact that you do have to deal with logistics of actually delivering perks and rewards. Now there are some creators that I have that I work with that are like, Sal, you know what, I'm just gonna do digital rewards. I'm not gonna deal with any kind of physical rewards. And that's great if you're a product category or what you're doing actually matches up with that, that's great. But if it's something where people actually wanna own the invention, they wanna own the product, in some cases you actually have to deal with logistics. And that's why I love to partner with different companies out there, like fulfillment companies, a sponsor of my YouTube videos. I love to partner with other people who can help on the logistical side of when you have, for example, 2,000 people, that's a lot of people, 2,000 people backing your campaign, and you have to deliver a product to 2,000 people around the world, how do you do that problem? So I would say that's another weakness of something that or when you're doing a crowdfunding campaign, you got to deal with logistics. Now, I would say you gotta do that anyway. If you're gonna be build a business, you gotta figure out logistics. So it is a problem you're going to have to solve, but there are solutions out there. Wanna take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrate today. Link in the description. Let's move into the next portion of this video, which is opportunities. Where are there opportunities when it comes to doing a campaign, a Kickstarter campaign specifically? So a couple of different techniques and tactics I wanna share with you. And at this point in the video, if you do like my videos, give me a thumbs up, uh, come subscribe to this channel for more content just like this. I actually have a free course out there on Kickstarter, which you can check out at crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter. I'm sharing with you a lot of cool lessons when it comes to artificial technology as well to speed up the process of launching a new campaign. So go and check out my free course down below at crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter. But I would say that when it comes to opportunities, there are a couple of ones I wanna share with you right now. The first massive opportunity that we've really documented, or I've documented on my podcast, Crowdfunding Demystified, that I'm trying to share with you, but trying to really just shout from the rooftops, is the fact that you can use PR, media attention, influencers nowadays, in order to deliver rivers of funding to your campaign. And this has been a technique and a tactic that many of our campaign creators have been doing successfully in order to crack the million dollar mark on Kickstarter. So the reason why I think this is so gosh darn powerful is the fact that nowadays with the internet, with social media, there are all these like micro influencers online. So if you're doing something in the camping and outdoor space, or maybe you're doing something more like, like card games and tabletops, or you're doing even a book, for example, there's probably an influencer out there that is willing to promote your project. And if you can work with an influencer, or you have a PR and marketing strategy, or you have a way to get bloggers to cover this, you can gain access to their audience instantly to an audience of hundreds of thousands of people and have that story go viral or just have the exposure of that audience and have that audience check out your campaign. So it's really a way to speed up the process of getting a big audience and a lot of eyeballs on a project is to work with an influencer, to work with, again, a blogger, uh, a news reporter, media, PR, that kind of a strategy. Having that element in your campaign is a massive opportunity, I would say, this year. Okay, so another huge opportunity, and again, I haven't talked about this in a lot of other videos, is kind of a marriage between what's working really right now very well with organic content and what's kind of a tried and true bread and butter digital marketing strategy. So what I call is this, this is like the marriage, if you will, of organic viral sharing and UGC content. So what do I mean by that? Right now, the easiest ways to get discovered in terms of organic content are going to be uh, TikTok, shorts on YouTube, IG Reels, that short form snappy kind of video content. Now you can also obviously be discovered very easily via YouTube and via more of the traditional channels. But I would say that it's almost like crack cocaine right now where the different social media and different technology uh, companies out there are really rewarding short form content. So first of all, if you wanna get access to a massive audience of people and you don't wanna spend a lot of money to do it, if you put out short form content related to your project or your product or what you're making, it's a very easy way to build up an audience from scratch. Great example of this is Pluffle, which is an interview that I did, and I'll try to link to that if I remember to down below in this YouTube video uh, description. Pluffle is a dog bed for humans, and there are a bunch of college students that invented this product from scratch and literally just made their own prototype, and they raised a boatload of money on Kickstarter, and one of their tactics was just literally posting TikTok videos of this product, which is really interesting and unique. 
and started to build a huge audience from scratch on TikTok, which then funneled into their email list and they got a ton of backers just from that very simple strategy. So first of all, picking a platform or channels that have short form content is one way, a really great opportunity this year. The second is UGC. UGC stands for user generated content. So for example, if you have an interesting new fitness product and it gets in the hands of other people that can try this out and give you feedback or re reactions or do you know, public kind of stunts and stuff like that, it's an easy way to go viral on these different social media channels. So UGC and the marriage of that with platforms that are geared towards short form content is a great uh, opportunity this year. Okay, the third opportunity that I'm going to be mentioning, and this is a little bit more of an advanced technique when it comes to Kickstarter, but it's something I've been trying to, again, document for you guys and demystify how this is working behind the scenes. And this is the fact that I see a, a huge uh, marriage, if you will, or a huge combo, if you will. It's kind of like if you have like, uh, you're going out there with Mortal Kombat, right? You have like multiple combos in order to take down uh, an enemy or a foe. And Kickstarter is definitely one of them, but I've been seeing so many creators who go beyond the platform of Kickstarter. They use that initial tribe, which they built up, and then to launch a Patreon campaign, which I've been covering a lot on this channel, then launch an equity crowdfunding campaign. They raise investment capital from the crowd. They raise millions of dollars from investors out there. They're investing like 500 bucks, right, in their actual company. So you can use the Kickstarter campaign to light the fire take that momentum, launch a Patreon campaign where people are then supporting you regularly, monthly, in order to have consistent income as a creator or as a founder. And then you can even raise money from your crowd doing an equity crowdfunding campaign on a platform like Star Engine, WeFunder, uh, Republic, one of the biggies when it comes to doing a regulation crowdfunding campaign. So the third opportunity is that when you do see success and you only need one success, you can fail as many times as you want. When you see one success, you can take that success from platform to platform to platform. So for example, do a successful Kickstarter campaign. Go to then to Indiegogo In Demand, then go to Shopify or Amazon, then go and start a Patreon campaign with your tribe. Get people to support you monthly and then go and launch an equity crowdfunding campaign and give those people an opportunity to invest in your company, invest you know, a thousand bucks in a regulation crowdfunding campaign and then raise millions of dollars with that and then do another one the next year, right? There's so many ways in which you can use crowdfunding in order to reward your crowd but also to have them buy into your business in different ways, become evangelist of your brand and use all that legwork which you're putting into launching a campaign and have dividends years down the road using the technique that I just talked about. So at this point in the video, if you're getting, if you've been enjoying my content, give me a thumbs up. In a second, we're going to segue into the final piece of this video, which are some of the threats that I see when it comes to Kickstarter and when it comes to crowdfunding. But if you haven't been enjoying this, I also do individual one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, intensive coaching calls with people, students that are interested in launching a Kickstarter or crowdfunding campaign. So if you're interested in launching a campaign, you want more guidance, you want handholding every step of the way. If you want to make sure you do this right, you build a strong foundation. If you to also look over your strategy, your tactics, recommend other tools, introduce you to other people in the industry, or we also work as an agency selectively on specific projects if we really believe in it, if it's something we think we can help with, go and book an individual coaching call at the link down below. You can book an individual coaching call with me. Tell me a little bit more about what you're trying to work on, what you're trying to accomplish, tell me more about where you are, You know, really what you're trying to do when it comes to impacting the world for the positive, and you can get that call scheduled with me ASAP when it comes to that individual coaching call at crowdcrux.com com slash coaching. Go and check out that link down below. All right, man, the final piece of this video, and I think this is incredible that you've gotten to this point when it comes to your idea or your business. And I'm gonna be honest and say that Kickstarter is not for everyone, right? Crowdfunding is not for everyone. My goal is to help demystify the world for you. So you can go out there, you can take action, you can move your goals further along when it comes to those milestones. And I would say that these are a couple of different threats which you should be aware of, that you should be concerned about, which you should be on the top of your radar screen when it comes to launching a crowdfunding campaign, specifically on Kickstarter. All right, dude, here's the first threat. It's the fact that if you have a good project, if you have a good product, people might try to steal your idea. I've had this happen to actually a couple of my students where they have an incredible campaign, they've raised six figures on Kickstarter, and other people try to knock off their campaign or their product. 
I've had people do this. I've literally had people in, be an imposter. They've used my face on marketing content, like videos and graphics and stuff like that, tried to sell services saying that Salvador Brigman sanctions these services. My gosh, never go out there. Always go to my website, crowdcrux.com, if you're ever uh, you know, looking to learn more information about that. But this happens not just with Kickstarter, but with anyone out there who's successful online. Trolls, people that you know have the worst intentions, scammers will take notice of this. So I would say the biggest thing threat is that if you do go big, if you build an audience from scratch like we talk about, if you get that funding, people are going to see you as a target. They might decide to try to rip off your project. And there are ways to defend against that. I think having a great brand is one of the best ways to actually defend against that. But people will try to do that. The second threat, and even just thinking about this, gosh, this just like, it makes me freaking angry, man. Uh, I work so hard to really have a good reputation when it comes to the crowdfunding industry. I've been in the industry since 2012. I actually started kickstarterforum.org, which is an online forum independent of the website Kickstarter, where people could actually report on things like frauds and scams within the industry because there were a lot in the early days and there continue to be a lot. So this really boils my blood when I hear about this. But unfortunately, because there have been a lot of scam-related campaigns with Indiegogo and with Kickstarter, backers are much more skeptical nowadays. So you might have been an earnest, uh, you know, heartfelt, transparent creator who's trying to bring a new invention to market, and maybe you just don't have the best marketing material out there to do that. Nowadays, you need to prove and show to people that your product works, that the functionality works to this, the high degree and it's really something that uh, works when it comes to doing a Kickstarter campaign. I've actually had a couple of different clients and students who need to go back to the drawing board, get more video to show Kickstarter that this actually does work when it comes to their technology project or gizmo. So another threat, again, is that there are scams out there that do take people's money who are incredible for backing these projects. And you need to build goodwill you need to be transparent. You need to be ahead of the curb when it comes to any kind of scandals or any kind of issues related to a project. You need to be willing to communicate with your backers and build that trust and be very transparent. So this is a threat, and I do think there are gonna be more scams in the future. So you gotta make sure that you position yourself as not being one of those types of creators. Another threat is that there are people out there that are going to try to just take your money and run. And this is something that a lot of people will discover once they launch a new Kickstarter campaign. They get just like flooded and inundated with messages of people like promising you the sky. It's kind of like one of those examples where like you get off your get off the bus in Hollywood and someone comes up to you and is like, hey, I can make you a star kid, right? There are tactics that are proven to work in terms of getting funding, and I have documented them religiously in my book, The Kickstarter Launch Fulfillment, and I share them in my free course. I talk about them, obviously, with coaching and my YouTube channel and my podcast. I try to also share with you things that are working behind the scenes, but there are people out there that will just really try to sell you a bridge. Right? They'll just tell you they can get you millions of dollars in funding for no work whatsoever. All you have to do is give them like a hundred bucks in order to do that. When it sounds too good, good to be true in that way, it usually is. So I would say that's another threat is that people will try to promise you things. They'll try to say they can get you, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for like a $50 investment. Usually it's not something that's going to make sense and you're just going to lose a lot of money that way. So be on your guard, be cautious of that and be listening to the right sources when it comes to launching a campaign. The final threat to cover in this video, and we're gonna really close off the video at this point in time, and if you've gotten this far, thank you so much for watching my content. Come subscribe if you want more content just like this. Uh, but I would say the final thing is really the fact that there's an opportunity and cost to everything. So when I got started in the industry in 2012, I was doing a logistic regression comparing the different categories on Kickstarter uh, for my mini econ thesis. And one of the concepts in economics or in econ is opportunity cost. And this is that when you're doing one thing, you're basically foregoing doing something else, okay? So in focusing on doing a campaign this year, you're foregoing other options. So I would say that the only reason why you should be doing a campaign, number one, you want funding. Number two, you want a crowd or a tribe. Number three, you're not at the point where you just wanna sell this product and deliver it in two days, but you really wanna do this for a brand building experience. You want people talking about it. You wanna get media mentions. You wanna get people talking about the project and also giving you feedback on the product. And finally, you see this as a stage within the life cycle of your business, and maybe you wanna launch multiple campaigns in the future. You wanna learn the system of how to do a crowdfunding campaign launch and even use other forms of crowdfunding as well in your 
your business in the future. I would say that in those cases, I think it makes a lot of sense to do a Kickstarter campaign this year. However, if those are not your goals, maybe this is something where the opportunity cost does not make sense for putting in the effort and the time to launch a campaign and also to learn about it, to be willing to learn about the process. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do wanna start off your campaign on the right foot, if you decide to do one this year, go and check out my individual coaching call again at the link down below at crowdcrux.com slash coaching. My name is Salvador Brigman. I am freaking passionate about crowdfunding and also about demystifying the world for you. And if you support that vision and that cause, that, that adventure, that idea, that concept, give me a thumbs up on this video. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Sal and I'll see you next time.